In this last sequence, we are going to show you, based on the configuration steps that we have carried out, how the example project can be used by an operator to monitor and control the process. The process object view is now closed, and the OS project is opened and activated. With the right mouse button, OS1 is selected, and the open command is triggered in the context menu. The project is activated in the WinCC Explorer. Now, Unit A is selected. All symbols contained in the picture were automatically generated. They can be rearranged using the graphics designer. The pictures may, for example, also be supplemented with static graphical elements. The HMI is communicating with the controller configuration in the AS. By clicking on the block symbol for motor 1, the motor's faceplate is launched. The first thing to do is to reset the motor module in the AS. Now the motor is started. The motor start is displayed in the status. The motor is stopped. The motor is now set to auto mode. The faceplates of the controller and the valve are also selected by clicking on their block symbols. The controller must be set to auto mode. The setpoint value is now set to 40. Now, a display for monitoring and controlling the SFC will be called up. This is done by changing the key set and clicking on the SFC visualization button. The SFC is selected. The SFC overview is now displayed. The detail view is selected by clicking on the SFC control. The sequence is now started. Since the actual value of the process variable is not greater than 50, there will be no transition. This setpoint is now changed to 90, causing the process variable to increase. It is entered in the faceplate of PID control 1. The sequence will now run through to completion. Motor 1 will be started in the third step of the sequence and be switched off again in step 4 after the configured step duration time of 10 seconds has elapsed. Key set 1 is again selected to display alarm and operations lists and the alarm system is selected. A list of the incoming alarm messages is now displayed in the workspace. The operation actions are automatically displayed in the operations list. This list displays all operations carried out so far. This is the end of getting started first steps with Sematic PCS7. You have gained an initial overview of the functionality of PCS7 and into how PCS7 makes it easy to configure a complete automation project. You have seen how a complete project was configured from the beginning from determining the hardware configuration and using customized library elements to powerful functions enabling you to efficiently copy complete units. Finally, you have also experienced the operator's view of the project and have learned about what it is like to operate and control the process from the OS. We recommend that you work through the example in the Getting Started manual on your own to solidify your knowledge. The example continues exactly where this Getting Started CD ends. Thank you very much for your interest in Sematic PCS 7.